Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today we're talking about types of soluble fiber that we'll find in foods and the food sources where we can find these types of soluble fiber. The first one to cover is inulin. It helps to keep you full for longer periods of time because it's slow to digest. And this type of fiber also takes longer to absorb as well, so it helps to prevent spikes in blood sugars after a meal. And inulin is not digested in the stomach, nor is it absorbed through the intestinal tract. Instead, it promotes the growth and support of our beneficial microbiome that we have in our gastrointestinal tract. Inulin is found in chicory root and grains like wheat, barley, and rye, and also some fruits and vegetables like bananas, garlic, onions, and even asparagus. Inulin is readily fermented by our gut bacteria, and that property may give some people a little bit of GI distress or gas when they eat inulin-rich foods. Another category of types of soluble fiber includes gums and mucilages. Gums are complex carbohydrates that are soluble in water. They will form a gel and a type of mucilage as a result. And these mucilages are thick and viscous types of gums in plant roots and seeds. And this gelling characteristic allows them to be used in a lot of food products as thickening agents and additives for moisture retention, emulsification, and stabilization. So the food processing industry does use gums and mucilages in a lot of foods, actually. Common food sources of gums and mucilages includes gar bean, locust bean, also known as carob, tamarind, seaweed like agar and carrageenan, and fenugreek, aloe vera, cactus, and flax as well. Pectin is another type of soluble fiber. Anybody who's ever done any jam making is familiar with pectin. It's a type of soluble fiber that helps to reduce the glycemic response in the body by slowing glucose absorption after a meal. Like other soluble fibers, pectin does help to feed our gut bacteria. It also is important because it helps to keep our cholesterol down. It helps to flush out fatty acids out of the body. Pectins can be found in abundance in apples and strawberries, citrus fruits, carrots, and even potatoes. Legumes and nuts also do contain some pectins, but in smaller amounts than the earlier foods mentioned. Another type of soluble fiber is beta-glucan. This forms a gel in the intestinal tract and it's fermentable by the gut bacteria. It's considered to be a prebiotic, meaning that it provides food for our gut microbiome. Beta-glucan may also be helpful in increasing our satiety after a meal and managing our blood sugar levels as well, thanks to the fact that it has a slow transit time in the stomach and the intestines. Beta-glucan is found plentifully in oats and barley, shiitake mushrooms, and reishi mushrooms. Psyllium is something that a lot of people may be familiar with, but they may not even know they're familiar with it. If you take Metamucil or something like that, the active ingredient there is psyllium. It is known for softening stool and helping it to pass out of the body. Psyllium will actually help to reduce our cholesterol levels, not only by binding with cholesterol and pulling it out of the body, but also by binding with bile acids along the way and pulling them out of the body. And then the liver is forced to make more bile acids from existing cholesterol in the body. So that helps to keep our cholesterol levels in check. Psyllium is derived from a shrub-like herb grown mainly in India, and it will not be found in any specific food source, but it is found in the supplements that I made mention of before. It could also be found in a pill form as well. 
Researchers have studied the effect of psyllium and they found that it might help to reduce our risk for cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and diverticulosis, high blood pressure, and obesity as well. It may also improve diarrhea, constipation, gas, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, and even high cholesterol, as I mentioned earlier. So it is a type of soluble fiber, and soluble fiber can be found in other types of foods, or other foods, but it won't be psyllium per se. Another type of soluble fiber is resistant starch, and this is what it sounds like it is. It's a type of carbohydrate that resists digestion in the small intestine tract. It travels pretty much intact until it reaches the large intestines and there it feeds our friendly bacteria. And so it's also referred to as a prebiotic because it does feed the microbiome. Resistant starch is important because it can help to control our appetite and reduce our blood sugar spikes after a meal. And since it's not broken down in the digestion process, it does not release glucose, so it cannot raise our blood sugar levels. Resistant starch can help to increase our fullness after a meal, and it can also be used to treat constipation as well and prevent it too. It also helps to lower our cholesterol, improve our digestive health altogether, and helps to lower our risk for colon cancer. Resistant starch is fermented in the gut, although it is fermented slowly. So it does release some gas, but less gas than other types of fiber that we can get from foods. Food sources include legumes, peas, beans, and lentils, with white beans and lentils being very high in resistant starch. It's also found in oats, barley, plantains, and unripe bananas as excellent sources of resistant starch. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. I hope this helps. Bye for now.